Hello and welcome back. And if you're someone that uses containers on a small or even grand scale and you're used to going to your local repository and downloading the latest and greatest images for what you want to run based on the bare metal of your system, it may be worth taking a moment and double checking your security there because a recent study that was conducted over in Germany uh, by the RWTH Aachen University, um, they found a substantial security issue in a large number of downloadable images. Now, they do, uh, you know, highlight several different app repositories, but the one that gets the biggest kicking is Docker Hub here, and it was highlighted on numerous websites. We're going to be looking at two in particular, golem.e, for example, here. What they were talking about during the course of this study, they recognized that they found 22,000 compromised certificates because of pre-made um, API keys used in these uh, containers that were then just being reutilized by lots of other users, opening the door to a large, very wide surface attack vector being made possible. Now, this study covered more than 330,000 Docker images. And in that, as you can see from the report here from Bleeping Computer, they found uh, that specifically revealed 52,000 valid private keys and just over 3,000 distinct API secrets in 28,000 of those Docker images. To give that a little bit of perspective, we can see that uh, researchers identified a total of over a quarter of a million hosts were using compromised keys. Now this is enormous because what you've got here is if you've got the ability for let's say an attacker, attack vector user, that is a large spread number of locked doors that have all got the same key. Then, of course, there is the impact on the original developers of these container images when they're creating multiple images, therefore duplicating those API keys for being found. And only are they a huge target in this alongside other users that are then duplicating these with their own um, uh, container creation there. But also the sheer level of access across surface is insane here in terms of a security vulnerability that is kind of man-made. Now, the extent of impact and the possible attack vector was also outlined in the Bleeping Computer article. And again, all of this is linked below. So when the researchers did look into the use of these exposed keys, they highlighted that 22,000 compromised certificates relying on that exposed key private keys inside those containers were found so that was 22,000 potential targets right there and then they go into a lot more detail about the nature and the severity across different utilizations and databases of those usage keys now why did this happen? Well, when most users create containers and then you download them and then deploy them in your own container environment, a lot of the time you're using preset builds. Again, when you look at the creation of uh, most containers, you can see it's a fairly, you know, step-by-step -step process. Very few users these days, due to the ease of things like Portainer and particularly Unraid as well, making uh, container deployment so user-friendly, like a lot of things in the world of network attached storage, the more user-friendly something becomes, potentially the more dangerous things can be because inherent in, you know, uh, vulnerabilities uh, and insecurities are then going to be duplicated widespread. And it was one of the main reasons that registry-based uh, container images could be, with their customization, incredibly useful. But that's when you've got that raised learning curve that containers bring into the fold that in most cases don't exist in the same way in standard VM images. The survey even breaks down into where those specific vulnerabilities in API secrets and keys were found, and they break down into a substantial amount of detail. I mean, fair play, this is an incredibly detailed report going through exa exactly how they found it and the potential dangers moving forward. And again, if you want to read through this or use your local homegrown API to break this down for you, go for it. But the ultimate takeaway at the moment is that when you are downloading images from registries, and again, we're not going to you know rag on Docker Hub too much here because they are one of the biggest out there. So of course, if they're going to be the biggest, they're obviously going to be one of the biggest target in terms of numeracy and frequency. But still, nonetheless... Make sure you keep rigorously on top of your security protocol, and particularly with the generation of those keys within these, make sure you don't give too much power to these containers if you're not going to have the relevant skill set in order to modify and establish your own keys there throughout. 
I cannot stress that enough. If you're going to be installing Dockers on your local NAS system where there's sensitive data, be incredibly tight about the level of access, control, and privilege that you're giving these Dockers. Not only to the general file structure where someone, an interloper, could go in and infect ransomware with a direct command push, but if there is system level access and permissions to make serious changes to your system, it could render the entire server inaccessible. Now, we can't put all the blame on the creators of these images. There's only a finite amount of stuff you can do before you create an image using repurposed API keys over and over again, or releasing an image and hoping that the end user when they install it has sufficient security privileges in place. So although they are, there's a bit of guilt on their hands, it has to be stated that not all of it is on them and we really have to stay on top of our access and protocols on our servers. Now, these things are getting more and more user friendly. I touched on earlier on downloading images from things like Unraid, downloading them from Portainer has become even more simple than ever. And the same thing goes for the packaging of images on these platforms. But that doesn't mean you can take the foot off the gas in terms of security or be overly reliant on the OS that your NAS is built on, be it turnkey or open source, to just assume that it knows what it's doing with the containers and making sure that your containers have only got uh, the amount of access they genuinely need, be that remote or just the internal is going to be pivotal for stuff like this. They do highlight in several areas of the article of the um, uh, Bleeping Computer article there that a lot of the impacted hosts here were more related to those utilizing these in conjunction with AWS and other cloud uh, bucket images. Uh, based images there, but that's not limited just to those. And the scope of impact for this, if it really was taken advantage of on a broader scope, would be insanely huge. And I would say would rival some of the biggest ransomware attacks in the past. So stay on top of your updates and maybe do a little bit of troubleshooting and some housekeeping with your existing containers. Don't just take for granted that everyone's using the Plex one, everyone's using the Jellyfin one, or everyone's using your local easy one-click open up um, app there. Go through your registry, go through your Docker images and find out which ones of them have got too much access. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry for such a miserable video. I hope someone finds this helpful. Again, we'll be putting together a little bit more of an article on this, but fair play, the big articles to read on this one for the most information is obviously that report um, here put together with that study that was shown to us earlier on from RWTH Aachen University, but also the golem.d and the bleeping computer article, which have really gone into a phenomenal amount of detail and to make this just a little bit more user-friendly to comprehend. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.